In the quest of Lonely Mountain. We will win back our ancient kingdom under the mountain, reclaim our treasure, and revenge on the cursed dragon Smaug. King Thorin, you need a burglar to steal into Lonely Mountain. Here he is, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> Excitable little fellow, but fierce as a dragon in a pinch. <laughs> yes, it's scrumptious. What? Have, what have I got in my pocket? <laughs> Not fair. Gollum. Well, that's my riddle. Hands, a knife. This 
string! It, or, or nothing! All wrong! Now, show me the way out! <sighs> we must go and get something first. <laughs> what have I got in my pocket? upon you all. The goblins of the north are coming. Behold, they ride upon wargs.
This is the tale of Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit with no idea of the adventures about to befall him or their consequences. My precious, it must know the way out! the trees. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Bilbo Baggins was a respected hobbit. He lived a comfortable life and never had any adventures. So Bilbo was rather surprised when Gandalf the wizard invited him on a great adventure. He politely declined. But not before accidentally inviting Gandalf to tea. The next day, Gandalf arrived with thirteen hungry dwarves. They ate everything Bilbo had to offer, then sang sad songs and listened to their king, Thorin Oakenshield. Despite his fear, something awoke within Bilbo. He wanted to visit distant lands, explore caves, and carry a sword instead of a walking stick. To his own astonishment, Bilbo agreed to go. He regretted leaving home almost immediately. In the dangerous lonelands, they found themselves cold, wet, and low on food. Suddenly, Balin noticed the light of a fire. Thorin sent their new burglar, Bilbo, to investigate. When the dwarves crept up to investigate, the trolls popped them all into sacks. Suddenly, the trolls started arguing. Gandalf imitated their voices and tricked them into a nasty fight. They fought until dawn. When the sun rose, the trolls turned to stone. Soon the company reached Rivendell, home of the elves. Elrond told them of a secret entrance to the dragon's lair, a door revealed only by the knocking of a bird called a thrush. After resting in Rivendell, they set out to cross the Misty Mountains. 
evil things and dreadful dangers awaited them, like stone giants and worse. They slept soundly in a dry cave. Then, Bilbo heard a noise. In the darkness and confusion, no one saw Bilbo crack his head on a rock and fall into shadow. When he awoke, Bilbo was alone. Lost again in the tunnels, Bilbo found a gleaming golden ring. He put the mysterious ring in his pocket. Then he realized he was not alone. Bilbo introduced himself to the mysterious creature named Gollum. They agreed to play the ancient game of riddles. The rules were simple. If Gollum lost the game, he would show Bilbo the way out. But if Bilbo lost, Gollum would eat a tasty dinner. Soon, Bilbo couldn't think of any more riddles. Bilbo followed Gollum out of the cave and found his friends on the other side of the Misty Mountains. But they were not out of danger. A pack of wild wargs attacked! When they reached safety, Gandalf said goodbye to his old friend, the Lord of the Eagles. At the edge of Mirkwood, Gandalf announced he was leaving again. He showed them a trail through the forest and warned them not to stray from the path. Soon their supplies ran low. One day the hungry dwarves saw wood elves feasting in the forest, and they left the path. The wood elves vanished. Bilbo found himself lost and alone. The wood elves returned and captured the weary dwarves, but Bilbo popped on his ring just in time. The wood elves took the dwarves into the Elven King's halls and closed the gates. The barrels floated down Long Lake and carried Bilbo and the dwarves to the safety of Lake Town. In the shadow of the dragon's lair, Thorin declared himself king under the mountain. The people of Lake Town held a great feast for the dwarves. Their old prophecies said gold would flow from Lonely Mountain when the king returned. And while the dwarves feasted, Bilbo had the run of the town. The people of Lake Town said farewell as the dwarves set out for the Lonely Mountain. They passed through the lands destroyed by the dragon, the desolation of Smaug. High in the mountain, Bilbo saw a thrush cracking snails. Then, as the sun set on the last light of Durin's day, Bilbo saw a keyhole appear on the side of the mountain and called for the dwarves. They opened the secret passage into Smaug's lair. Bilbo told them all about the hollow spot on the dragon's chest. The thrush listened and then flew away toward Lake Town. Suddenly, the wind howled. They barely made it into the secret passage before the dragon smashed the mountainside. Bilbo and the dwarves were trapped in Smaug's lair. It was a quiet night in Lake Town when Bard noticed a golden light in the distance. His men thought gold was flowing from the mountain, but Bard knew it was dragon fire. Arrows splintered against the dragon scales. The townspeople fled. As Bard knocked the black arrow, the thrush whispered to him and told him what Bilbo saw. Three days later, the ancient raven Roach told the dwarves Smaug was dead. 
and that the men and wood elves were sending armies to claim a share of the treasure. Thorin sent Roark north to his cousin Dane. He called for an army of dwarves to make war on the men and elves. Bilbo decided to stop the stupid and selfish war before it could begin. He took the Arkenstone as his rightful share of the treasure and gave it to Bard and the Elven King. They offered to exchange the Arkenstone for the gold Smaug had stolen from them, but Thorin refused and cursed Bilbo. The next day a legion of dwarves arrived, led by Dane, and three armies met on the field of battle. Anger was in the air. The men had lost their homes and loved ones. The elves knew what it was to suffer under Smaug, and wanted to help the men rebuild. But Thorin would hear none of it, and so it turned to war. The leaders gathered for council with Gandalf, and joined forces against the goblins. Bilbo decided to take his stand on Ravenhill, among the elves. Bjorn crushed Bolg, the Goblin King. The goblins were dismayed, but not defeated. Suddenly, Bilbo saw the eagles, but then a stone struck his head, and he saw no more. The battle raged around him, a battle of five armies. The goblins were driven from the lonely mountain, but Thorim, king under the mountain, lay dying. He asked Bilbo for forgiveness. In his heart he wished he had been more like the Hobbit, valuing food and cheer above hoarded gold. The old prophecies had come true. The dragon was gone, and gold flowed down from the mountain to rebuild Lake Town. Men, elves and dwarves had a new chance to unite against future dangers. Bilbo bade farewell to his friends, took only two small chests of gold, and began his journey home. He had many hardships and adventures before he got back, but that's another story. It was a quiet night in Lake Town when Bard noticed a golden light in the distance. His men thought gold was flowing from the mountain, but Bard knew it was dragon fire. Arrows splintered against the dragon's scales. The townspeople fled. As Bard knocked the black arrow, the thrush whispered to him and told him what Bilbo saw. Three days later, the ancient raven Roark told the dwarves Smaug was dead, and that the men and wood elves were sending armies to claim a share of the treasure. Thorin sent Roark north to his cousin Dane. He called for an army of dwarves to make war on the men and elves. Bilbo decided to stop the stupid and selfish war before it could begin. He took the Arkenstone as his rightful share of the treasure and gave it to Bard and the Elven King. They offered to exchange the Arkenstone for the gold Smaug had stolen from them. 
but Thorin refused and cursed Bilbo. The next day, a legion of dwarves arrived, led by Dane, and three armies met on the field of battle. Anger was in the air. The men had lost their homes and loved ones. The elves knew what it was to suffer under Smaug and wanted to help the men rebuild. But Thorin would hear none of it, and so it turned to war. upon you all. The goblins of the north are coming. Behold, they ride upon wargs. The leaders gathered for council with Gandalf and joined forces against the goblins. Bilbo decided to take his stand on Ravenhill, among the elves. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Bilbo Baggins was a respected hobbit. He lived a comfortable life and never had any adventures. So Bilbo was rather surprised when Gandalf the wizard invited him on a great adventure. He politely declined. But not before accidentally inviting Gandalf to tea. The next day, Gandalf arrived with 13 hungry dwarves. They ate everything Bilbo had to offer, then sang sad songs and listened to their king Thorin Oakenshield. At dawn, we begin the quest of Lonely Mountain. We will win back our ancient kingdom under the mountain, reclaim our treasure, and have revenge on the cursed dragon Smaug. King Thorin. You need a burglar to steal into Lonely Mountain. Here he is, Bilbo Baggins. Huh? Oh. Excitable little fellow, but fierce as a dragon in a pinch. Lost again in the tunnels, Bilbo found a gleaming golden ring. He put the mysterious ring in his pocket. Then he realized he was not alone. Bilbo introduced himself to the mysterious creature named Gollum. They agreed to play the ancient game of riddles. The rules were simple. If Gollum lost the game, he would show Bilbo the way out. But if Bilbo lost, Gollum would eat a tasty dinner. Soon, Bilbo couldn't think of any more riddles. <laughs> yes, it's scrumptious. What? A, what have I got in my pocket? <laughs> Not fair. Gollum. Well, that's my riddle. Answers. A knife. This. It's uh, uh, nothing! All wrong! Now, show me the way out! <sighs> we must go and get something first. <sighs> oh, what have I got in my pocket? Followed Gollum out of the cave, 
and found his friends on the other side of the Misty Mountains. But they were not out of danger. A pack of wild wargs attacked. When they reached safety, Gandalf said goodbye to his old friend, the Lord of the Eagles. At the edge of Mirkwood, Gandalf announced he was leaving again. He showed them a trail through the forest and warned them not to stray from the path. Soon their supplies ran low. One day, the hungry dwarves saw wood elves feasting in the forest, and they left the path. The wood elves vanished. Bilbo found himself lost and alone. 